Russians were greatly impressed by the new drone attack on Moscow. According to incoming information, about 150 UAVs attacked Russian territory in September. Analyzing the nature of the destruction and the mass of the attack, Russian analyst and blogger Anatoly Nesmian notes the trend of Ukraine's superiority in the development of drones. He emphasizes that Russia needs to copy Ukraine's experience, but this is impossible due to the complete centralization of all processes in Russia. According to him, Ukrainians demonstrate the flexibility and mobility of their structures, which, being decentralized, are ahead of the sluggish machine of Russian bureaucracy. Nesmian emphasizes that Ukraine's raids are becoming more massive and destructive, and the UAVs themselves are becoming more technically advanced. At the same time, Ukraine uses many times more drones on the front, and we are already talking about four- and five-digit numbers. At the same time, Ukrainian production, modernization, and use of drones are decentralized. They are designed, assembled, brought to readiness in hundreds and possibly thousands of places. The Russian system is strictly centralized and therefore retains traditional inflexibility, rigidity, and incredible conservatism, so a balance has emerged. Russian drones are more powerful and cover the entire territory of Ukraine, but there are a lot of Ukrainian drones and they have the ability to dynamically increase their numbers. In fact, in just a year, isolated long-range raids have turned into massive ones. The next step, as one can assume, is the introduction of elements of artificial intelligence and the ability to use drones in a swarm. At the same time, the creation of a Russian air defense system capable of somehow limiting the activities of Ukrainian drones in the conditions of total centralization will lag behind Ukrainian capabilities by many steps each time. He emphasized, the Russian expert emphasizes that the solution for Russia lies in the same decentralization when private structures will be able to create drone hunters capable of intercepting attacking drones. But the desire of the Russian regime to control absolutely everything will nip such an idea in the bud. Therefore, for now, a few guards with machine guns are still enough, but after some time, the effectiveness of attacks will inevitably increase. It is not people who fight, and it is not weapons that fight. It is organizational structures that fight. And at this stage, the Russian organization maintains parity only due to its greater resources. But structurally, it is already losing to the more mobile and flexible organizational structures that Kiev demonstrates. The Russian expert emphasizes. Reinforced Ukrainian troops have stalled a Russian offensive on the Donetsk region town of Pokrovsk, a key part of the front, for more than a week, but there are no signs that Russia has abandoned its goal of advancing on the city. The New York Times reports, it is noted that the fighting in the villages and fields to the east of the city remained unstable and the Russian troops continue to advance in other places, according to servicemen fighting there. The publication added that in the Pokrovsk area, Ukraine has reinforced its troops with soldiers from two brigades. The Pokrovsk direction came as a surprise, admitted a tank commander from the 93rd Mechanized Brigade of Ukraine. The 12th Azov Brigade of the National Guard of Ukraine also announced its presence in New York City near Pokrovsk. When the brigade was deployed in this area, the situation on the front line was catastrophic. Despite intense fighting, our soldiers are holding the line. As battlefield maps show, the Russian advance on Pokrovsk was halted a week ago near the town of Selidovo. But the Russian advance continued south, where the Russian army has all but encircled the Ukrainian-held territory between the towns of Pokrovsk and Kurakovo. Recall that, as Forbes wrote, Ukrainian troops are counter-attacking in several sectors along the Eastern Front. It was noted that the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine was able to form a reserve detachment of about five brigades, in particular by involving the National Guard forces. It was noted that last year the National Guard of Ukraine expanded and strengthened several of its brigades, uniting them into a so-called offensive guard that includes the 12th Azov Brigade as well as the Karadag Brigade, which recently took up positions south of Pokrovsk and quickly counter-attacked. Now the capture of the city by the Russians no longer seems inevitable. It was noted that the high terrain in Pokrovsk and its environs encourages the attacking forces to head towards the lower seven approaches to the city. This also directs them towards Selidovo, 